If you think back to our discussions of thiols and thioethers, the focus there was on the sulfur atom as a good nucleophile, and the amino nitrogen in amines is similarly an excellent nucleophile, arguably even better than the sulfur. And so the amino nitrogen can act as a nucleophile toward electrophilic oxygen and oxidation processes like we saw with thiols and thiol ethers, alkyl halides and SN2 reactions, or polarized pi bonds and addition processes. So this general reactivity sums up a lot of what amines can do. One of the first things to note, and one of the actually less common reactions of amines that we use for synthetic purposes is oxidation. And this involves the formation of a functional group called an N-oxide through the coordination of the amino nitrogen via its lone pair to some electrophilic source of oxygen. And this could be in hydrogen peroxide, sodium percarbonate, a variety of reagents can be used for this process. And in some cases, if the nitrogen is electron rich enough and nucleophilic enough, this can just happen in the open air. The resulting functional group is an N-oxide. It's just a product in which the amino nitrogen, formally now anyway, is positively charged and the oxygen that gained the new bond is formally negative. The chemistry is more complicated when you get away from tertiary amines. Weird functional groups like nitrosos can form and we're not going to go into those here, but tertiary amines will stop at the N oxide and pyridines will as well. Pyridines are heterocycles containing a nitrogen atom that looks like this. These can also form in oxides, which in the case of pyridine looks something like this. Notice still the nitrogen is positive and the oxygen is negative, so that's analogous to the behavior of tertiary alkyl amines we've already seen. Alkylation of neutral amines is absolutely key, and this generally occurs through an SN2 process. The amino nitrogen and its lone pair are great nucleophiles for SN2 reactions. So, for example, in the presence of a nice electrophile like methyl iodide, where the carbon is linked to a good leaving group, we can observe SN2 reactivity, and this is a nice way to make nitrogen-carbon bonds in a number of cases. We'll look at the details in a future video, but the general reactivity will suffice to show here that a great way to make carbon-nitrogen bonds is to use the nitrogen as a nucleophile and the carbon as an electrophile. And if we've already got three alkyl groups linked to the nitrogen, this can result in the formation of what's called a quaternary ammonium salt. So if you think back to that primary, secondary, tertiary nomenclature of neutral amines, if we add a fourth single bond using the lone pair of the nitrogen such that it's positively charged, we end up at a quaternary ammonium cation. And this is called alkylation since it installs an alkyl group at the amino nitrogen. Amino nitrogens can also act as nucleophiles toward electrophilic pi bonds or electrophilic atoms within pi bonds more specifically. So something like a secondary amine can engage in nucleophilic addition to a polarized pi bond through electron flow like this. And after proton transfer, we end up with a product in which a new carbon nitrogen bond has been created, and that was created through donation of the amino lone pair. And we've added a hydrogen to the oxygen and removed hydrogen from the nitrogen through a proton transfer process. So this hydrogen, in a sense, came from the amine as well. And this kind of step isn't really an entry to additional chemistry that we'll explore in more detail later, the formation of imines or enamines, depending on the substitution pattern of the amine nucleophile, and nucleophilic acyl substitution, which is a type of substitution process in which the addition is followed by an elimination that kicks off a leaving group. I want to look at two specific examples now of amine reactivity that kind of don't fit anywhere else involving either amines directly or functional groups related to amines. And the first is called COPE elimination. It's a special kind of fully intramolecular, in other words, it occurs within a single molecule elimination reaction to give alkenes and what's called a hydroxyl amine, an amine in which one of the R groups linked to the nitrogen is a hydroxyl group. And it starts from an N oxide like this and involves fully intramolecular electron flow, in other words, cyclic electron flow. We can think of that N-oxide oxygen as a base inside the molecule, and so it can accomplish elimination if it can reach a beta hydrogen that's in the appropriate position. And so electron flow like this, you can verify, leads directly to the alkene and the hydroxyl amine. Another way to think about this is that the N-oxide nitrogen and everything that's attached to it can act as a leaving group or nucleophuge. Because the electron flow is completely intramolecular, the reaction is stereospecific. 
This means that if we start with a particular stereoisomer of starting material, for example, well-defined configurations at these two stereo centers, we will end up at a product in which the alkene has well-defined and predictable stereochemistry, and we can determine the stereochemistry of the product by analyzing the transition state as this electron flow occurs. One thing we can recognize by looking at this reaction scheme, for example, and that should be a B, by the way, not a D, groups that are on the same side of the starting material end up on the same side of the alkene and the product. So B and D end up cis to one another, and A and C also end up cis to one another. And we can explain this observed stereospecificity using the transition state of this step. The transition state involves syn elimination. This means that the acidic hydrogen and the leaving group are on the same side of the plane of the soon-to-be-formed alkene. This fixes the orientations of the substituents on the stereogenic carbon atoms, with B and D on the same side of the transition state, and A and C on the same side of the transition state. And as electron flow occurs, the orientations of these substituents linked to the stereogenic carbons don't change. Their relative configurations don't change. B and D remain cis to one another throughout the process, and A and C remain cis to one another throughout the process. Through a, through a flattening out of the stereogenic carbon atoms, we get to the observed alkene product in which A and C are cis, and B and D are cis to one another. So the COPE elimination is useful because it can give us a well-defined alkene, an alkene of well-defined stereochemistry starting from an N-oxide starting material. And notice that two of the alkyl groups linked to the amine tend to get thrown away, and we want these to be things without beta hydrogens to avoid the possibility of elimination in these other alkyl groups. So using a dimethylamine with two methyl groups is very common since these groups cannot undergo COPE elimination. The other reaction we're going to look at is an elimination of ammonium cations. And these are unique because they eliminate in the presence of silver oxide and heat to give the less substituted alkene. And this is called the anti zaitsev product because it's contrary to the product observed, for example, when we look at E1 elimination of alkyl halides, where the more substituted product is formed preferentially. This is odd because thermodynamically, the more substituted product is more stable. The Zaitsev product is more stable thermodynamically than the anti-Zaitsev or less substituted product. And the idea here isn't terribly complicated, it's just a steric effect where the very large size of the leaving group here, the trimethyl ammonium group, results in preferential deprotonation at the less substituted position rather than the more substituted position. The base has a much more difficult time reaching these hydrogens which are more sterically hindered due to the very large leaving group involved in this reaction. And so the less substituted hydrogen is deprotonated preferentially, and we observe the major product is the less substituted product. And this is called Hoffman elimination, and you'll see this contrasted with Zaitsev type eliminations. It's a nice way to make the less substituted alkene, and by the way, these trimethyl ammonium salts that are the starting materials for Hoffman elimination can be generated by alkylation of a primary amine with excess, for example, trimethyl iodide or trimethyl bromide. 